All right, pretty nasty stuff here. So you're gonna to wanna to wear some uh, prophylactic gloves here. But anyway, nothing to this stuff. You just slobber it on. Slobber, slobber, slobber. And uh, it'll eat that first layer off. You come along and bam, that grinder would, that uh, fiber wheel would just blow it right off without any problem. And then uh, you can see what you're dealing with. All right, let's remove some paint here. paint stripped off this area over here so now I'm gonna go to town with this thing and start uh, getting a close better idea of exactly what I'm dealing with here so I'm gonna start banging away and just start seeing some, some more rust go through right there. Probably end up, I'll probably end up cutting right here but I just want to get a look. Oh, so I can't even be banging on that. But saw that light coming through. So uh this is not good, it's gonna get kind of depressing, so you should probably have something to drink handy. All right, so I'm starting to uh, cut some of the sunken metal out of here over on the left side. And you can see some of the nastiness I'm getting out of there. Ideally, I'd be coming up to here or so, but realistically, I need to be down pretty close to where it's worse. And you can see some old putty from a previous repair. I estimate it's probably about 10 years old or so, and it seems to have held up pretty well, so. Anyway, I'm going to continue to black here, cut this off, and uh, then we'll start, start the glass build in there. So, here we go. So for those uh, big ugly ghastly holes over there above the uh, fender wheel there, what I'm going to go with is um, long hair, uh, long strand uh, bondo hair. Here we go, I'm going to start slobbering this goo in here. This is pretty messy. What I'm really trying to do is get as much in there as I can. Apply a little bit of pressure and sort of injecting it in there. All right, so I got this uh, this hole here all dressed up and everything, and I'm going to use kind of an odd method to build my form here. Uh, I can't use those small metal things like I could do on the other side because it's too big of an area. So what I got is some of this stuff, standard issue floor matting that you have all over the garage. You should should anyway. This is really good stuff, and. Um, sacrifice one and uh, cut it to where it'll fit in here then um, use wax paper as a barrier paper go to the wife's kitchen and make yet another raid on her stuff put the wax paper in there and the um, the glass won't adhere to it so let's see if this is gonna work and the reason this has the right properties of, of flexibility and everything if you use something flat like a thin piece of plastic off of a shipping container or whatever a storage container wouldn't be able to deal with these complex curves in different different directions and this but this foam will so theoretically this should and I built myself a little uh, temporary wooden structure here to hold this up in place and I'm using more more of the weight of the wood than I am the tension just to hold it in place um, Okay, here we go. I'm going to take this thing off of here and see how this thing turned out here. It's alive! It's a beautiful thing. Slightly tacky. You probably should have waited a little bit longer. So I got the heat light and gotta get the temperature up a little bit. 
So, there I have it, a pretty good uh, starting point to uh, start building this up. So what we'll do next is a short strand glass for strength around the edges and then, um, then I'll start to fill it in. So what I did was, you can look down there and see just how, uh, how grizzly this thing is. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty heinous, but anyway, so what we have here is, um, first thing I did, you know, I put that barrier up there and I went layer of glass. Actually, I did uh, two layers of glass, layer of mat, layer of glass. So to really get this right, you have to impregnate the uh, material with the resin. And then when you're done, if you pull it with a squeegee to remove the excess resin and then um, mop it up when you're done, it, it gives it a lot more strength. So this is a, what's the word, omnidirectional. All these fibers go in different directions, so that gives it a lot of strength. The first piece gave it the, the form. This gives it the strength and uh, rigidity, and this uh, backs it all up and seals it. So we got a, a pretty strong repair here. So um, now a uh, little bit of short strand around the edges, and then I'll go uh, start pulling Bondo in there and um, start working on aesthetics. I'm ready to start uh, finishing this baby up. What I did was I put one more layer of short strand on the inside there to give it a little more strength. Then I dressed up the outside a little bit, got rid of some of the rough edges. I pulled one layer of short strand, really thin, really tight layer, to fill in some of the deep spots in the glass and to give it a little more strength around the edges. Then I gave it one quick pull with the standard um, body filler. And then I blocked it real quick. I should have videotaped it, but it's not a big deal. Um, one block with real aggressive 40. While it was still tacky before it completely dried, that way it just flakes right off, no dust, and uh, it works really well. Um, just throw a quick block back and forth, both directions, with two large blocks. Then another pull with 80, less aggressive. And uh, so now I've got a pretty good foundation here. So now I'm going to start fine tuning this a little bit. So what I'll do next is. Um, I'll clean this up a little bit more and I'll do one more long pull this entire panel here with a standard putty. Block that down, one more pull with uh, fine glaze and it'll be done. Alright, so I made a big pull of uh, mud and then I went over it with 40 real quick and I want to block it with some 80. did a thin layer of finishing glaze here. I need to go maybe touch up a couple of spots here and there, but I need to clean this up. Then I had a big rough spot here. Someone drug a grinder across there or something. Anyway, um, pretty much have this wrapped up here. So I'll clean up a few of these things and put some uh, sanding primer on it. And we'll call it good for now. sanding primer on it, sand it a couple of spots and then put another coat on it. It's got a couple of little bit of spots to rub down with 400 but anyway it's time to uh, celebrate with a cold refreshing beverage. Then I'll, I think I'll wheel it outside and uh, hit it with the sandblaster. I'll show you what this crazy contraption here is all about. Alright so got this thing outside. Um, so this weird uh, undercarriage contraption here is what you're seeing here. It's the first time this thing's been out for 13, 14 months. Just uh, working this on weekends, so don't really have time to move on it very fast, but it's looking good. So I still got a couple little things I got to fix here, but now I'll start on the uh, 
the roof on the side. I already have the doors, the trunk, the hood, and the fenders, and the grill are already done. So, and then after that comes my next project. Um, can you go back a ways? 63. So, this will be a, uh, this will be a considerably easier project. Not nearly as in rough a shape as a Galaxy, but as soon as I finish that up, I'll tear into this. And I'll have two cool cars. That ought about do it. So maybe that wasn't the right way to uh, patch a big rust hole, but it was a cheap way. It was an easy way, and uh, I think it's going to work. It'll give me the strength I need, and it'll, it'll, it's going to look fine. It won't win any shows, but it'll work. So there you go.